Hello, this is Travis for Sliver Surfer 1. A couple months ago, I got myself a 3D printer. Uh, one of the reasons why I got a 3D printer was to make parts for my photography gear that uh, you can't get somewhere else, um, and also to make parts uh, far cheaper than it would cost to buy these these parts. And a lot of times, these parts you can only get uh, cheap enough from different countries where it takes a month uh, to two months to get them shipped overseas. As you've seen, I do a lot of mirrorless camera uh, photography um, and I do a lot of experimental, you know, photography stuff as well. I'm, uh, I like to, to mess around with things. I sometimes fail, sometimes I don't. One of the things I haven't done yet is uh, made one of the adapters uh, to put lenses on my camera. There's a little system I've got that I haven't shot a lot with. It's probably the cutest camera in the world. I'm going to show it to you right now. It's this one here. This little guy is the Pentax 110. It uses the Kodak 110 film and it's a SLR, you know, single lens reflex camera. It's been stated that this is the smallest SLR camera in the world, film SLR, okay? There might be some other ones that, you know, make that claim, but it, this one's definitely, I'd say the most well put together one. I believe it's from, was introduced in 1981. And it came, it's, it's got, I think, about four or five different lenses. Um, I have three lenses, and you can see how cute that little, that's a little 18, little 18 millimeter lens. And this little guy is supposed to have enough coverage for an APS-C sensor. So I'm going to make a little adapter for this. Um, and I also would like to use these on my gimbal because most lenses, like this 50 millimeter lens, most of them are too heavy manual. The, most of the manual lenses are too heavy to put on my smartphone gimbal, at least. Um, this one's a 52.8. And because this camera I'll show you the sensor of it. One, well, not the sensor. The sensor of this is film. But look how tiny. Look how tiny that that film area would be. Okay. Um, these lenses, to make a good image on a piece of film that small, have to be sharp, wide open. Uh, these lenses don't come with apertures. I'm not going to put an aperture in my. Uh, adapter. I'll show you this. That you use a little switch here. And you can take off these lenses and you can see the little aperture right there. I don't know how close up I can get on that, but you can see the aperture there. It's a square aperture, so it might not be too difficult for me to put an aperture into the the adapter. So I'm going to show you the lenses I do have. I believe this came with a 18 millimeter 2.8, which is this one. And it came with the 50 millimeter 2.8. Yeah, there we go. It's in focus. The 50 millimeter 2.8. And it came with the 24 millimeter 2.8. I don't have the two, the 24 millimeter uh, 2.8. I'm gonna try finding it. There was a couple more put out. 1981. There was a, an 18 millimeter pan focus one. There was a 20 to 40 millimeter 2.8 zoom lens. So yeah, I'd like to get my hands on one of those because that's pretty fast, as as you know. Um, but there's one that I've been trying to get for a long time, and I was just at a camera show, and I bought it off of a friend of mine from the camera show. Her name's Maggie. Is this one here? That one there. It's big. But it's not big for what it is. Okay, it's the Pentax. Focus, come on, you. Oh, it's trying to focus on my face because I got. Yeah, there we go. It's a 70 2.8 lens and it's a beauty. It's quite heavy. I won't be able to use this on my gimbal, I don't think. 
but this is supposed to be a good one. I think this inspired the the 77 millimeter um, Pentax Limited, which is probably one of the best lenses ever. Um, those people that use Pentax out there, um, that's a good lens. Yeah, they're not the perfect lens, but um, the perfect lens is the one that you like the most. The thing about Pentax lenses is the color that most people like. The color that Pentax lenses uh, can reproduce is, is fantastic. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try taking these I'm going to try taking these cool beans here and adapting them for my Sony A6000 and my you know my other Sony cameras. I also have a, what I'm filming on right now is a Sony uh, uh, A5000 so I'll, I'm going to try adapt it for you so wish me luck I'll be back with the news on how well this went What I did to make this adapter for my Sony was I used Tinkercad, which is a free it's a free 3D rendering uh, tool that allows you to easily, quite easily, once you get used to it, you take shapes and group them all together and type in your your measurements and everything, and you can put holes in things easily, and you can do all kinds of stuff uh, with it. People share tools they have featured. Uh, shape generators that help make things. You can you can also go to Thingiverse and you can you can get the mounts for Sony. You can get the mounts for I, even I saw the Pentax mount on there, the female mount, the camera end mount. So what you could do if you wanted want to do it the easy way is you could take the the um, Sony mount and you take the Pentax mount and you can connect them together between tubes. Um, but uh, I wanted to make my own so what you need is one of these digital caliper and you can you can take measurements of the little parts of your lens that you're gonna do you know and just punch them into the shapes that you're building and cut out pieces and just it takes a little bit of time to learn how to do it but it's really fun and it's really accurate and you can do it in inches or in millimeters but do it in millimeters because inches are weird. Sorry. Um, so yeah, here's what I came up with. What I did was I made the Sony. Sorry, the crusty stuff in here. I'll explain why there's crusty, crusty white stuff in there uh, later. So what I did was I made the Sony side and left a, a hole in it, and then I did the the uh, Pentax side, and it was made in a cylinder that fits inside of the Sony cylinder. I made these two separate and then I added some tape to the outside of the Pentax part and I pushed it in. It was already a pretty good friction fit but I put a little tape in there just to to help it be a little bit stickier. Then I put on that to fit in there and then I put that on infinite focus and put this this on my Sony a6000 and since this is on infinity what I did was I, I put this on infinity and and looked at the furthest thing and pushed this 
in a little or out a little bit to make it in focus and I left it like that and I took this off and I took off the, the lens first and since it was nice friction fit I added a few drops of super glue to the little inside thing here and then added some more when it was stuck and now that's uh, a adapter for the Sony Pentax and then what I did after that I tested it out I took this I took this and I measured how thick it was okay and then I took the two pieces in Tinkercad put them together to attach them to get a single piece adapter okay this adapter is a lot lighter than the the metal ones it looks like a solid piece, but in when I printed it, I printed it at 20% infill, so it's very light. And you can see now, I can put it on my Sony, and then I can put on my little lens here. And now I have a perfectly working Pentax uh, 110 lens. And a little thing I did to be kind of funny about it is I made made a little tiny lens hood, a little tulip style one. Um, <laughs> it, I should have made a tulip one. I should have made like a cone shaped one because um, the whole barrel rotates <laughs> to focus. So you do it that way. But there is a little bit of logic in why I did it this way is because I'm going to use this on a gimbal in manual focus mode and I don't plan on fo I'll, I'll focus it the way I want because this is so easy focus it the way I, where I want it and just pop this on pop this little thing on it and it's going to be on my gimbal and I won't need to change the focus so there you go I hope you enjoyed my little video here. I'm going to put some samples up later. I'm going to put some samples up later so that you can see uh, both uh, both um, images and video of how well this works. Videos I've shot of this, there's no light leaks at all. Um, I saw a video somebody made um, one of these adapters for their camera and they made it out of a bright colored um, plastic um, and they were complaining that it was leaking light but you know it's a bright bright colored plastic and uh, a lot of light can travel through those where black absorbs light okay so if you like my videos please subscribe I answer all your questions you have or at least I'll try to and I like I like helping my subscribers out a lot okay there's some benefits to being a subscriber for me and you so please subscribe right here hey, it's my camera and then watch these videos too okay thank you